So let's go ahead now and take a look at the spherical coordinate form of a triple integral. So for a function f continuous on a solid region d in R3, we can define this solid region d by the set of all ordered triplets, rho, theta phi, such that rho is greater than or equal to rho sub 1, less than or equal to rho sub 2. We have that theta is greater than or equal to theta sub 1, less than or equal to theta sub 2, and that phi is greater than or equal to phi sub 1, less than or equal to phi sub 2. And this is such that rho sub 1, rho sub 2, theta sub 1, theta sub 2, phi sub 1, and phi sub 2 are all constants. Right, they're all real numbers. And then we don't want to forget those restrictions on these new variables. The restrictions on rho, theta, and phi. We know that rho is greater than or equal to 0. We know that theta is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. And we also want to keep in mind that phi is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to pi. So we're now ready to go ahead and write this triple integral as an iterated integral. So we know the standard form of a triple integral over a solid region D in Cartesian coordinates f of x, y, z, dv. And we can now rewrite this in spherical coordinates as the integral from theta sub 1 to theta sub 2. We have the integral from phi sub 1 to phi sub 2. Our inner integral is from rho sub 1 to rho sub 2. And now we want to use those three conversion formulas that we found for x, y, and z. So let's recall that we know x is rho cosine, or we should say rho sine of phi cosine of theta. We also know that y is equivalent to rho times sine of phi sine of theta. And then last but not least, we know z is equal to rho times cosine of phi. So we are now going to use these to replace the x, y, and z in the function in Cartesian coordinates from the previous integral. So this is going to be f of rho sine of phi cosine of theta. y becomes rho sine of phi sine of theta. And z becomes rho cosine of phi. And then this is the most important part here, the differential. So the differential is equal to rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. And so now that we have converted this to spherical coordinates, we can rewrite this one more time to make it look a tiny bit easier to view. We have the outer integral from theta sub 1 to theta sub 2, your middle integral phi sub 1 to phi sub 2, your inner integral from rho sub 1 to rho sub 2 of a function in spherical coordinates. So that's a function in terms of rho, theta, and phi, multiplied by the differential rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. And so this is are iterated or in one of the iterated integrals for a spherical coordinate triple integral. And as you've been observing here, we want to exercise some caution. We want to make sure that we know dx, dy, dz is not equivalent to d rho, d phi, d theta. This is bad. Instead, we know that dx, dy, dz is now equivalent to rho squared sine of phi d rho d phi d theta. So I've included a proof of this conversion in the lecture PDF, so I encourage you to take a peek, but at the very least, you just need to remember this conversion.